it's not their fault. If not for our leaders, what am I doing here? I can tell by his accent that Jabisco is Nigerian. Plus the fact he told me he's Nigerian. It's because of our useless leaders that the Chinese can treat us like shit. Look at me, a full grown man with wife and children working to feed my family. I came here to do business. Is that my crime? How long have you been living on the streets? Ever since I arrived in Gangzhou three weeks ago, the police came to my hotel room and threw me out. The law says you should go into quarantine for 14 days. Oh, I'm supposed to quarantine myself when they threw me out of my accommodation. His question statement comes at me with such sarcastic force that I pause before I ask him another question. Jibisco looks at me like I'm truly a moron. Hi, I say to the other three guys sitting on the pavement with their belongings, all looking at me with the same contempt as Jibisco. So I repeat my question. Where are you sleeping tonight? Mr. Man, have you not already confirmed your stupidity? Leave this place before I stone you! I was kind of trying to... I don't know, that I didn't see the bedding that was laid out on the ground behind them. I'm sorry. Let me buy you guys something to eat. Do you like Mackie D's? There's one across the road. Why did I say that? Guilt complex? Anyway, they look at me, then at each other and laugh like I told a joke. Jabisco then says, why not? And they give me their order along with their exaggerated appreciation. I'll be right back. I cross the street. The night is busier now that some of the restraints have been lifted, but not busy enough for the burger joint to have, say, more than around three people in it. I'll be in and out before you know it. I might even still get to work before Deng. If I don't, no worries. It's all for a good cause. As I get to the door of the McDonald's, the customer service assistant at the door blocks my way. Excuse me, I say to her, but she points to the sign on the door. Black people are not allowed to enter the restaurant. I look at the assistant. Nikai Wan Xiao! Another assistant, a big lad, comes over to join her. Go away! Go away! And then I hear the boom of laughter behind me from Jabisco and his crew. Look at him, idiot! Don't mind him, he thinks he's better than us. Their mocking laughter rings in my ears as I make my way down the street. I don't want to walk past them, so I take the back route. We'll add 10 minutes to my walk, but as usual, I'll be over an hour early. I guess I won't be Deng to the office this time. I run into a batch of police officers, forcing a group of protesting Africans out of their flats and onto the street. I recognise Officer Chang. He nods to me as I pass by. I nod back. I get to the end of the street before shame makes me turn around to look. The Africans are being shoved away from their former abode. I should go back and talk to Chang. He's a reasonable guy. Then one of the Africans shouts, We are not Uyghurs! Why are you treating us like this? The office is as busy as it can be when you're all keeping social distance. My producer, B, waves at me by the photocopier. I've been summoning up the courage to ask her out before, you know what, shut everything down. She puts the document she was copying on the table for me to pick up. All I can say is, how's your mother? Better than yesterday. Now I'm hearing sarcasm in everyone's voice because I asked her the same question yesterday. Before I can reply, she's gone and Deng walks in. I tap my watch at him triumphantly. Please, you beat me today only because the police are picking up people who broke the quarantine. I had to take the long route. I don't know why people cannot obey the law. They're being thrown out onto the streets. What do they expect? Deng had studied journalism in New York for two years and worked there for three before returning to China. I've been around to his house a few times and he'd been around to mine. But to throw them out into the streets, where will they go? I heard they were told to stay indoors for 14 days, and they didn't. I'd never seen this side of Deng before. This hard, uncaring side. There's a sign in McDonald's, no blacks allowed. You don't eat in McDonald's. What were you doing there? They, I, 
<laughs> the point is, it's racist. In all the years you've been working here, you've never given a thought to Africans. Suddenly they're your bro? Guilt complex. 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 Fuck you, Deng. Fuck you too. I'm not sure where the anger is coming from, whether from tonight's events or from the fact that Deng was telling the truth about me, not giving a shit about anything I didn't care about, or the fact that we both knew who the they were we were referring to. I could easily be one of those people. If my parents hadn't gone to study in the UK and decided to stay, you'd be talking about me like that. I have nothing against Africans, but they're posting shit about China and social media. Wow. In all the years I've known him, Deng has never displayed any sense of nationalism. We were on lunch break together and he once told me nationalists are people who lean on the past glories of their ancestors. They have very little to offer the future. I thought, like mines. We never made them slaves, never colonized them. We're pouring money into the place, creating equal partnerships they could never have with the West and we're the most racist nation on earth? Fucking ungrateful. So what, you think what they're saying about your lot is propaganda, 100%. They're only doing America's bidding, trying to undermine us. We're both animated now. Everyone in the studio is listening. And for the first time since I came to China, I feel vulnerable. Here in this supposedly liberal space, I'd called home for six years. What is going on between you two? I don't want to know. Stop arguing and get ready for me to count you down. BU's intervention is the cue for Deng and me to come to our senses. Especially me, since I'm not political. I don't have the information at my fingertips to stand toe to toe with Deng. So, what's your government doing, if not propaganda? I ask him as I order my papers and check my laptop. What are they doing, if not refusing to see the blatant racism that's going on around them? So, you didn't get served in a fast food joint and now the whole of China is racist? I have a better idea. Tell your newfound brothers to stop coming here. Tell them to stay in Africa and develop the place. That'll solve a whole lot of problems. There's a collective exclamation. <gasps> a while back before the lockdown, we'd been discussing a report on China building the new African Union headquarters. Deng asked me innocently, or so I thought at the time, what it would take for Africa to develop like China. I tried to act like I cared and said, Africans should stay in Africa and develop the place. That'll solve a whole lot of problems, I said. Then you lot should stay at home and not spread your fucking virus around. Take responsibility for your actions. Stop blaming Africans, you fucking chink. His hand movement is so fast, I think he's about to land me one. Instead, he brings out his mobile phone and shows me a picture of his sister, Chunwa. She's in her second year at uni in Birmingham. Her face is battered and bruised. She sent me this last night. She was walking home from class when a gang of boys attacked her, broke her cheekbone. She's lucky to be alive. She's afraid to go out. Attacks like this have been increasing against us. She did nothing wrong. Why attack a defenseless girl? I'm going to say, why attack defenseless Africans? But I can see the hurt in his eyes. I don't know what else to say, so I stay silent. I start thinking about how we got to this point, how one moment I could think of myself as a nice guy who can be slightly up his own arse into calling a mate by a slur. It's like both of us were infected by something contagious. You know, I'll, I'll apologize and see where we'll take it from. What life in Wu? Si, san, er, e. This is the evening news. The headlines. President Xi Jinping says the people of Hong Kong are very happy with the new security laws.